Hey everyone and welcome to another Rock for a Q video. My name's Ad and this time I'm going to take a look at one of the Stephen Hendry challenges that he's been doing versus pros. Now I've seen a couple of other YouTubers do videos on these kind of things, uh, mainly the sort of potting challenges, but I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I haven't seen anybody tackle the safety challenge where you've got to hit a red on the black spot and get the cue ball back to balk and potentially hit a line of five or less reds on the balk cushion. So I thought I'd take a look at this. Now obviously in the real challenge you get three shots to do it and you get a number of points depending on how many reds you put on the bulk line and if you're successful on hitting the reds on the bulk line with the cue ball. Now that is pretty difficult to do in three shots for me but I thought it would be a good exercise to actually try and learn how the shot is done so that if I do do this at some point as a challenge against perhaps another YouTuber or something like that then I'll have already learned how to do this shot and I'll know where to put my reds on the cushion to try and get my best chance of hitting them. So that's what I did in this video and we're going to take a look at my sort of iterative process and how I went about that. Now it's a pretty difficult challenge and you'll have seen if you watched Mark Williams' attempt and Neil Robertson's attempt that they didn't actually do too well. Mark actually wasn't successful at all, neither was Stephen when he did it against Mark and they seemed to blame the table a little bit that the cushions made it wasn't possible on their table and i was maybe a little bit worried that that was the same on the table i was using you only got a target there on stick well yeah but i, I was expecting not to oh, slide you can't do it miss it with five what cheat in with five yeah you missed it hey, i missed it <laughs> But on Neil Robertson's attempt, he did actually manage to get one successful shot, which was pretty damn impressive, to be honest. And I'd love to be able to replicate that kind of shot. That's, that's close. Double kiss. Oh, get in! Boom! So let's take a look at my attempts and see how my iterative process worked and if I managed to get the shot down to a reasonable degree. Before we do though, if you like the idea of this video and you like other videos like this in the future, please give this video a thumbs up by clicking the like button at the bottom. It really does help me understand what people like and what people don't like on this channel. And if you do click the like button, it tends to get this video out to a wider audience, which helps the channel no end. So I started off with playing the shot, starting on the right hand side of the table as we look at it, thinking that I was probably going to be hitting the right hand side of the red as we look at it, therefore wanting to put left hand side on the ball uh, and I'm better at putting left hand side of the ball, left hand on the ball and I'm right. So, um, well, off to a great start. <laughs> I think I now know that I might be, if I get a respotted black in the future, I might try and cut it in. But uh, anyway, try again. And I was playing basically about half ball with, um, a little bit of side spin here so basically trying to figure out what happened there so I, at that, that time I tried to go hit the other side of the ball so hit the uh, left hand side as we look at it or the right hand side as I was playing the shot uh, and I figured that actually worked out a little better um, I must admit I didn't watch like I didn't sit down and watch any of the attempts that the pros had done before this. I have watched them, but I didn't sort of pay too much attention to how much how the shot was being done. So I wanted to uh, sort of find my way through this. So that one, I pretty much hit full ball, which was obviously not the right way to do it. I ended up getting a double kiss. So that was complete uh, enough to waste of time. So what am I going to do with this shot? Um, putting the ball back. At some point I moved the ball to the other side of the table uh, and played from the other side of the table. Partly because the camera is in the way slightly and partly because of the way I'm playing the side. So still playing with, I'm playing, playing with bottom left hand side here. Uh, I'm playing with just bottom actually there, uh, trying to uh, widen the angle off the cue ball. But obviously the stun just slows the, the stun and the drag just slows the ball down too much. So. I figured out it's probably not worth playing with bottom although I think I do try again and see what happens let's have a look what am I going to do so yeah so bottom and a little bit of right hand side I think just trying to widen the angle which definitely widens the angle but I think just slows the ball down too much I think the line was pretty good there probably would have hit the reds but obviously it was just too slow 
Um, and I think bottom just uh, just slows it down too much. We'd have to hit it too hard. So what we're going to try this time, it's an iterative process, remember, so just trying to do slight adjustments to sort of see what difference it makes to the shot. So I'm still trying with a little bit of bottom, so nothing like slogging a dead horse. Um, figured I think it's because I got a good line, so I was thinking, well, what happens if I hit harder? And actually, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, it still ends up stunning too much. So here I try and I, I figure out, okay, I'm going to have to hit it with left hand side and spin it around the angles like a kind of like a break off shot so I end up moving the cue ball to the right hand side of the table and I, that sort of works for me I didn't quite get enough pace on it but it was a decent line so I'm starting to figure out actually what I'm going to have to do here so basically plenty of left hand side now do I want top spin as well or do I just want to hit it hit the center of the white like vertically the center of the white but on off to the uh left hand side as i look at the ball so that <laughs> uh i hit with a little bit of bottom and left hand side i think and obviously it stunned it into the pocket which was impressive but not exactly what i wanted to do so having to get the uh the red out the pocket unfortunately so definitely don't want to play with bottom want to play with Either centre ball horizontally, sorry, centre ball vertically, or perhaps a little bit, a bit of topspin to maybe accelerate the cue ball off the red a little bit. Um. So again, wasn't too bad a line. I think probably would have come round and hit the reds, but obviously way short of pace. The cue ball that was, so hit that too full. I think. Um, not really thinking about too hard about where I'm hitting the red. I'm basically going for a half ball shot at this moment. And that's basically about right. So I cheat a little bit in that I grab the red uh, because obviously we watched earlier, we watched Mark Williams uh, get foiled <coughs> by it coming, the red coming and hitting the cue ball, which I think is a bit unfair. I think it's fair that you should take the red, stop the red from hitting the cue ball. But, um, you know, this is not a shot you would play really you wouldn't want to end up having both the red and the object ball oh, sorry have the cue ball and the object ball at the same end of the table so um yeah it's always going to be a danger of a double kiss really but yeah not quite tuning it in that's worse than my last shot hit that one too thick basically so Rest assured, I do get this eventually, and do start getting it tuned in to like to I get it to, to to get to a point where I don't get it every shot, but I get it close to. Um, so that's more like it. Top spin, and left hand side, and that is pretty much perfect. It hit not the center of the the five, but the uh, the one to the right as we look at it. Uh, obviously. In the real Stephen Hendry challenge, you get to choose how many balls red to put on the cushion. At this point in time, I'm just trying to hit um, the centre. I'm hitting, hitting the reds and work out where I could consistently hit the reds. So if I was going to do this for real, I'd be able to fine-tune where I'm positioning my red or reds uh, to, uh, to get the best chance. And again hit that one too thick although again the line wasn't too bad probably would have maybe just missed missed the reds to the wide or to the right hand side but wasn't too bad so that was about right I just caught the bump in the middle pocket a little bit and just checked off um, otherwise that was pretty good and that one didn't hit that one hard enough. It had a nice bout of top spin on it, so it did accelerate off the red a little bit. So if I'd hit that a little bit harder again, so I just just sort of surprised at how much pace you have to put into the shot. Um, obviously on a faster table, this is not a fast table by any by any means, uh, and the cushions in particular are not particularly fast. So um, you know, uh, it, uh, partly I wanted to see if it was even possible on my table because you know obviously we saw earlier that. Uh, in Mark Williams' attempt, he wasn't sure whether it was even possible. So we got a double kiss off the off the uh, knuckle of the pocket, and I think that would have been uh, successful other than that. So it's a little bit unfair about the red. So this one's up burn. Again, I stopped the red, but oh, 
yes, it does have legs, but I hit the left-hand side that time of the pack. So I decide to go get my um, spotty white here and maybe t try and see what side, or try, try and judge the amount of side I'm putting on the, the ball a little bit more. Actually, that's not very easy with the spotty ball. You kind of need to use it in conjunction with a slow motion camera or something like that. So probably what I should have done, um, I, I didn't. I, I was using my GoPro as a table camera, uh, so I couldn't put a GoPro on my head as a sort of POV camera, and that's the sort of best way to judge spin with uh, one of these balls. But yeah, I got a lot of spin on that one, but not enough, obviously, and I don't think it was the right line either. Um, so try that again I definitely got the right shot here it's more about combination of judging the throw of the cue ball when you put the spin on it and that's just short of pace but it would have and it, it maybe would have missed the reds as well but never know um, but yeah it's a case of putting enough left hand side on it but also judging the throw so that you also get a half ball to three quarter ball contact on the red um, which is something that you don't really have to do <laughs> very often. But there we go, that is a successful shot. There you go then, I managed to do it, but we're going to take a look at that shot again with a few zoomed in shots and a few slow motion shots to sort of work out exactly how I did it. Before we do that though, if you've made it this far in the video and you're watching and not a subscriber to the Rope for Q channel, please do consider hitting that subscribe button and also possibly sharing this video with one of your snooker playing friends. Okay, let's take a look at that shot again, but with a few slow mos and a few zoomed in shots and try and work out exactly how I did it. So this is the same as that last shot, so I'm just going to just show, slow some elements down and slow motion it. So slow motion this, trying to sort of see, I'm definitely hitting centre of the cue ball vertically, but obviously putting a lot of left hand side on it, not exactly cueing it straight, hitting it about sort of a half ball, three quarter ball strike and it comes around the angles and hits nearly the middle ball but not quite, so pretty happy with that. There we go then, I do feel I'm relatively confident in this shot now to get it in a couple of attempts if I do end up in one of these challenges with another player or another YouTuber or even Stephen Hendry himself, you never know. I'm also going to have a go at some of the other Stephen Hendry challenges. I've already had a go at the six reds around the blue spot actually and I didn't do too bad to be fair so I will post a video on that fairly shortly so keep an eye out for that. But for now though that's all from me. I hope you have a good rest of the week and I'll hopefully be back for a midweek video if not I'll see you next weekend.